Hey guys, today we're in Fusion 360 and I want to talk about how I plan to go about doing the linear rail conversion on the PM727M. Now, I don't want to take all the credit for these ideas. This is a collaboration between Wyatt and myself. We sort of tossed around ideas and came up with uh, this approach. Now this is something that I haven't quite seen done before. It's a little bit different than the linear rail conversions I've seen uh, done on other machines, some 45 series mills and some G0704s. So let's take a look. The main thing I wanted to try to get away from was destroying the castings on the mill. Of course any material taken away from the mill is just going to reduce the rigidity and put stress on other areas. So I really wanted to try to stay away from that as, if, as much as possible. A lot of people take and mill the dovetails off of the column to do the z-axis rail conversion. I didn't want to square this corner off here and I didn't want to have to ruin any of the y-axis base. So we're pretty much just going to leave this intact uh, the way you see it. For the y-axis, we're going to install some datums. The lip here that the rail sits against is called a datum. Now most of the time in, pre, in conversions that I've seen done before, most people just machine the base down and create this datum and do the same thing for the column. I wanted to try to get away from that by installing these precision ground bars. They're not cheap. These are McMaster car. They're precision ground and these particular ones on the Y axis we will have to machine. They only come in three quarters of an inch width, one inch and an inch and a quarter. Ours need to be around an inch and a half, maybe an inch and a sixteenth. So for the Y axis we're going to have to machine that down a little bit. Shouldn't be a problem. We're going to have to drill these holes anyway. So now what this allows us to do by using these bars here as our datums, we can then install our rails. These are RG series rails and they are up against the datum. Now you'll see linear rail conversions where they just mount the rails directly to the base. That's fine. That is probably the least preferred method. If you look into the installation guide, because anytime there's a crash, these can move around. So by having this datum here and having this rail locked up against this datum, it's going to be uh, a, rel a really rigid installation. Uh, likewise, we're going to be machining some angle brackets here that will bolt to the side and that will pin the rail up against the datum. Plus, you've got all your mounting holes here. So it should be a really secure installation. Now you may have noticed that on the blocks, I'm using flange blocks for the y-axis. I'll show you that in a second. And also they're overhanging. Now, the reason they overhang is because if you'll remember back when I did the original conversion for the 727, I notched out the table here to give me a little more travel in the y-axis. By doing so, that lets the saddle extend past the base about an inch and a half. Well, with the rails, they'll just run off the, the blocks will just run off the rails if we don't have them overextended here. So that is the reason they're hanging over there. 
we also need to make some kind of support for this we can't just have them cantilevered over there without any kind of support so we what we decided to come up with is an angle bracket we'll mount these to the front make sure that they're level and squared up and then bolt our rail to the top now these are just a 4x4 four four machined angle block and we just split it in half to make two pieces when we go out in the shop I'll kind of show you that so then we get our support and there's also going to be room here to put a stop so that we don't run the blocks off the rail just in case we also will need to put some stops in the back here um, so that the rail doesn't run off the block or the block doesn't run off the rail excuse me in keeping the same theme not to hack up the mill as you can see we don't have to really do any modification other than bore and tap some holes theoretically if you removed all this you could slide your saddle back on there and put it back to a manual mill so keeping in that theme we're not going to mess with the original saddle instead we're going to machine one out of an inch and a quarter steel plate and then that way we don't have to mess with the saddle we have now this could be aluminum I want to try to go with steel plate I'm still trying to locate a piece that I can use for an reasonable amount of money I don't have to want to buy a full sheet of steel and you can see that we're going to have the uh, blocks rest up against this datum that we're going to machine in here this is for the X and of course there is a datum for the Y now I've drawn it up with the datum on both sides however you got to be really precise if you're going to have four datums on an axis uh, the way they recommend is one end floats you have a master rail and a master block and then you have a sub rail and a sub block and these two will actually float off parallel off of this rail and block so the saddle is going to be steel we've machined out a pocket for our a ball nut mount here and our ball nut a recess here for our ball nut to sit in I don't know that I have that drawn up here no and then we're going to mount our uh, x-axis datum now these will actually bolt to the table let me show you that like so same thing we don't want to have to do any kind of machine work on our table so we're going to be using these precision ground bars as our datums then we will add our RG rails now these blocks are not flanged these are square blocks now the reason to have flanged and square blocks is to make sure that you can bolt this thing together because the square blocks need to be bolted in this direction from the bottom well you can't bolt these up and then bolt these the, the y-axis blocks up so you got to be able to bolt them up so for the y-axis we're using flange blocks and we'll be able to bolt them from the bottom as well so after we bolt the x-axis on will be able to bolt the y-axis because we'll have these holes covered up here so you can see how that's going to sit in there and you can see that the blocks have clearance there and again we'll have an angle bracket here it'll bolt to the side of our table here and come down and push the rail up against the datum 
and that'll help lock it in place just in case there's any kind of crash or we just don't want the rail moving uh, moving around and also of course the rail is going to be bolted to the table again should you decide to go back to a manual mill for whatever reason you can just remove this you'll have some holes there but uh, that shouldn't affect anything it'll just be little pockets for lubrication to go into and the dovetails and all are still intact these holes here are for a bar to go across here and lock the blocks in place again there's a datum on each side for the blocks these holes here will lock these blocks in place now they're not really securing the block they're just kind of pushing the block up against the datum just to keep it from try to help keep it from getting jostled around should you have some kind of crash or anything now these are 15 millimeter RG rails and blocks the size for the HG is just a little bit different on the blocks but they're basically the same dimension so you can uh, go with either here they both will work the datum for the x-axis is a three-quarter inch bar just a stock size so all we have to do for it is just bore some holes to mount it for the z-axis we're going to be installing the same three-quarter inch bars for our datums I need to actually put a hole a little bit closer to the end here I need to adjust the whole location there I think a little bit but that's okay now we're not going to worry about this hanging over the top here on the z-axis the blocks will actually be uh, much lower we're going to use 20 millimeter rails RG rails and blocks for the Z axis this will give us a lot more rigidity and support and you can see that we clear the dovetail here so that's going to be nice again we'll put something on the side here to press the rail up against the datum to keep it nice and tight and secure up against the datum so nothing gets uh, knocked out of alignment and then we're also going to machine a saddle inch and a quarter steel plate and we'll machine a saddle I still haven't finished drawing it up there's going to be a hole here for the uh, connection to the ball screw You can see we have our holes here for our uh, spacer mount I don't know if I have that drawn in here anywhere no let me see oh here we go our head spacer there I'm hoping because of the linear rail conversion I'm hoping I can use the same head spacer here um, it pushes the the blocks push the saddle away from the head a little bit so I'm hoping that that spacer is going to work it doesn't need to be any shorter or taller we'll just have to see but yeah basically that is going to be the linear rail conversion you can see how the stepper mount fits right in there with no problems to that all right so you can kind of see how this is going to relate uh, to the machine here on the model I think it's going to turn out just fine we'll just have to wait and see in the next video we'll start working on these datums getting them uh, to the right size get the holes drilled in them work on these angle blocks and start doing some mounting of the rails okay so I'm out here in the garage and I just wanted to kind of quickly show you what I was talking about in the Fusion 360 model I have picked up the Sterrett uh, precision ground flat stock now this one it happens to be an inch and a quarter and we're gonna need to make it 
uh, about an inch and a sixteenth but it's just going to <clears throat> sit up against here like so and then I'm just going to mount the rail up against that of course I'll have to make sure that this is you know nice and straight before uh, I mount the rail and I don't like the fact that I'm going to have to trim that stock down but they only come in three quarter one inch and an inch and a quarter so the distance I really need is about an inch and a sixteenth and you can see uh, what kind of clearance I have here and then that way I don't have to worry about messing with the dovetail uh, and I'll have clearance. Now we talked about the front part hanging off here. Let's see if I can adjust this again. So we talked about the front here hanging off and so what I did was I picked up uh, this angle block and this is a four inch, four inch wide, four inch by four inch and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to split it down the middle, machine that edge off and then I'll bore holes on each side and then I'm going to mount that just like so so I'll have part of it here for this rail and then the other half will be on the other side but that's going to give me a nice uh, nice support for the rail that's going to be hanging off and then it'll be able to travel out here and over travel a little bit without having to worry about running off the rails so I'm gonna pretty much do the same thing for the table the table I'm going to use I'm gonna pretty, pretty much do the same thing for the table here the table I'm going to use uh, the same stuff now this is Starrett brand it doesn't specify in McMaster car where I got this what brand it is I was kind of surprised that it was Starrett but now this one is a uh, three-quarter inch by 36 my table is only 27 and a half so I'm gonna have some of this stock left which will be cool because I can just make some uh, parallel ba bars for the vise with these leftover pieces but it's just going to mount like so and then, and then we're going to mount so we'll have our datum here and then we'll mount our rail directly to that like so and it'll be just pushed up right and tied up against that and as long as that is screwed down and secured square and our rail is square that should um, keep it in place should we have any kind of uneventful mishaps I'm going to have to mount some type of clamping mechanism it'll be maybe like a piece of angle iron or something and it'll bolt to here and push up against the rail and just keep it nice and secure uh, yeah that's pretty much it I've got still this is the best method to allow me to do this without having to mess with any of the dovetails I won't have to machine any of the dovetails off the square blocks fit just right on the X table and the flam blocks over there you can see are going to fit just right on the Y Z works out the same the Z axis will use the same 3 quarter inch uh, precision ground stock as the datum but they'll have the 20 millimeter rails so stay tuned for that in the next video we'll probably start machining some of these datums uh, getting the holes drilled in there cut to length and ready to mount on the table and base and column if you have any suggestions or questions please feel free to comment please subscribe to the YouTube channel thumbs up if you like the video thanks for watching and most importantly be safe.